Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a quick overview of fabrics for pad making just to get you started if you're not sure where to start. So I've got some core fabrics here and I'm just going to go through the different types of fabric. Um, some of these you have to order online, um, some of these you can get in store. So the first type is flannel. So what that means is it's a woven that has been brushed out to be kind of fuzzy on the surface. So you can use several layers of this to make cores. Um, if you want to, you can order different kinds online. Like this is a bamboo cotton flannel. I didn't see much of a difference. I would just go get the, uh, the cheaper version in stores at Joann's um, with a coupon. So there's that. Those are the, this is the readily available option I think most people start with. If they want to sew a pad today and they don't have anything around the house to upcycle, um, you can go to your local fabric store and get some flannel. If you have printed flannel sitting around, you can also use that. I've used that for cores um, several times for myself. Um, just a good way to use up flannel that you might not have a use for. So those are flannel options and the next option that you might use if you're wanting to go online and order something is a fleece. So this is a bamboo cotton fleece option. So it's smooth on one side and fuzzy on the other side. This is from Nature's Fabrics. It's 400 GSM bamboo fleece and this is a very popular option for people who want to order something online to use for cores and I would recommend this if you if you don't want to use flannel and you want to order something go to nature's fabrics site and pick up some of their bamboo fleece and also note that the fleece um, fuzzy side it starts off looking like this this is Terry but the only difference between these is that the loops have been brushed out on the fleece. So these are very similar, but this is fuzzy and this still has its loops intact. So, and that's the next option is you can get um, bamboo terry. If you're going to get bamboo terry, I recommend getting the kind that is smooth on one side and looped on the other side because this doesn't make a mess when you're cutting it. Um, some terries that are more like toweling, you'll have a mess everywhere, and that's not fun. So this kind is pretty easy to sew with. It's better than the thinner terry options. So um, I don't mean to make that confusing. I've ordered a lot of different kinds of fabrics to try, and these are what I would recommend to you <laughs> after my experimenting. Of course, everybody has different preferences, but um, these I feel confident recommending. This is also from Nature's Fabrics. It's the 500 GSM Bamboo French Terry. So there's that. There's the fleece, the terry, and flannel. I'd say these are very popular options. The variations that you can find online would be fleeces made with hemp mixed in to the fiber. Um, if you can find it in store, you could pick up some cotton fleece. That would also work fine. The benefit of using um, these thicker fabrics is that you don't have to cut so many layers for your core. Like for these two, I can cut two layers and sew those into the pad and basically have a heavy pad. But if I want to use flannel, it gets difficult because you have to cut so many layers and sew those together um, it can be hard on your machine to sew many of these layers together at one time. So then you end up having to get creative with how you sew it together. So those are the options. And next, I want to show you the like backing options. And... Some of the most popular options would be um, PUL or um, a polyester fleece. So this happens to be power stretch 
made by Polar Tech or Malden Mills, but I would say it's um, comparable to um, anti-pill fleece that you could get at a fabric store locally. And this is PUL from Nature's Fabrics again. This is a really economical option, in my opinion, because you get a whole yard of it for, I think it was nine over $9, but that will make a lot of pads. So you can go with that route. You can hide it behind some flannel or a woven fabric or some corduroy if you don't want to have the slippery side next to your underwear because it doesn't always grip very well. But these are the two common cheap options. So you can grab these locally. I think, actually I don't know if you can get PUL locally anymore it, at Joann's. I think Joann's is phasing out their diaper support diaper sewing supplies so that PUL might be something that you have to order online. But you can always get anti-pill fleece or blizzard fleece in the store. It's not the best option, but if you are home, um, it's fine because you can just change pads more frequently. I also think it's a good fabric to start with just to practice sewing so that you can kind of learn what your preferences are for backing options. So some of the options that you can order online, um, this is a PUL that's bonded to Cotton Sherpa, and I got this from Wazoodle. They have many, many options for bonded PUL fabrics, so it's actually a little overwhelming. But this is, in the cloth pad community, um, generally accepted and, and liked. So it's pretty thin. The plus is that it has PUL, but it also is grippy on one side, so it's not sliding around in your underwear, and you also don't have to mess with sewing a hidden layer if you want to hide the PUL. So that's nice. And the other thing about this is you can dye it different colors if you want to, so that's kind of fun. And another option that's very popular right now is... Um, soft shell fabric and I think you can get this from Fashion Fabrics Club online. I'm not exactly sure but Google that or ask in the group because the sources for where you can get things is constantly changing. It's difficult to make a list of sources. So this is similar to fleece because it's fleece on one side but it has a waterproof layer I believe. Some of them have a more visible, like, polyurethane layer in them. But that's a popular option right now. So it's more reliable in its water resistance than a fleece option. So there's that. And I believe that's... Those are the most popular backing options for pads. You can also upcycle uh, materials that you find around your house, like if you have an old fleece blanket or jacket that you're not using anymore, you can go ahead and use that. And let me see, I've got some other fabrics over here I just wanted to show you in case you're looking on sites and you want to know what they are. Um, this is a cotton Sherpa. This is really good for people who have a flow that is um, really fast or um, clumpy. Sorry for the graphic terms, but it's good for grabbing um, menstrual flow that can sometimes be messy because it can just soak in to that um, fiber. So that is cotton Sherpa. And then here's a bamboo Sherpa. It's very similar, except this feels softer, and it's a little fluffier. I can't remember where I got this. We'll have to ask um, Nature's Fabrics if they had this or if I got this somewhere else. I know Nature's Fabrics has had Bamboo Sherpa, and I've also gotten Bamboo Sherpa from Wazoodle, so those are two places you could find that. If you're wanting to have um, a dyed topper, or just a really fuzzy one. Really good for making postpartum pads or heavy pads. And then another really popular option 
is um, organic bamboo velour. So it's very soft and silky. It's kind of stretchy, so it can sometimes be difficult to sew, but very popular option because the colors when it's dyed stay very vibrant. And then here's the cotton. Make sure that's in focus, sorry. This is cotton velour. It's also very soft, not quite as silky as the bamboo velour, but they're both very nice. I would say this one might feel drier because this feels kind of silky. I don't know. You'll have to just try both and see what you think. But if you want to try dyeing fabric, then both of these are good options for that. They take color and hold it very well. So I hope that that helps. Um, don't stress about getting started, really. Just grab some flannel or whatever you have laying around and just sew your first couple pads because I promise you the first ones, um, they're going to be a lot of trial and error and you just have to start. It'll get better as you go. <laughs> By the fifth pad, you're probably going to know what you need to do to improve or what fabrics you want. So those are my tips. I'm sorry if I sounded in a super hurry throughout this whole video, but I hope that this was somewhat helpful and that it can get you on your way sewing pads.